Let's take a look at how to obtain the beam quality factor for electron beam. So for electron beam compared to photon beam, it's slightly complicated. So the KQ factor actually equals to three factors multiply together. If you look at the, this TG51 formalism. So in this formula, the, the, the reading, the corrected chamber reading and the, the NDW cobalt 60 factors, they are the same as photons. So what's the rest? Uh, is the KQ factor. So the KQ factor equals to the P gradient, multiply the KR50 prime, multiply by the KE cal factor in here. So the first factor is the P gradient. Um, it has no unit. The P gradient is the gradient correction factor. It basically corrects the ionization gradient at the point of measurement, and it's only needed for a cylindrical chamber. So here's briefly uh, why we need the correction. So for a cylindrical chamber in here, and if, if this is the up, uh, incoming beam from, from AP direction, um, because the beam come from one direction, the center of the chamber is not the effective point of measurement. Uh, because, for example, if you look at the center, the beam passes through this amount to reach the center, this amount of distance to reach the center of the chamber. But if you look at here, the beam passes through less distance to reach the center plane. So if you look at all the beam integrated over the entire upper half of the chamber before they reach to the center of the chamber, the actual effective point of measurement really happens at the upper stream of this chamber. And for photon beam, this effective point of measurement, it's 0.6 multiplied by the radius of the cylindrical chamber. And for electron beam, it's the 0.5 multiplied for the radius of the cylindrical chamber. So this P gradient is actually from our TG51 chamber measurement. So it equals to the reading that measured at a upper effective point measurement divided by the reading at the reference depth. Remember, this reference depth is closely related to the R50 value of an electron beam, and the R50 value is from the PDD scan of an electron beam. And we only need to correct for this P gradient for cylindrical chambers. So in other words, if we use a parallel plane chamber, because it's so flat, the effective point of measurement is necessarily just the point, the center, uh, or just the front plate of the parallel plate chamber. So the P gradient for a parallel plate chamber is equals to one. And the next factor is the KR50 prime. It also has no unit. It is the electron quality conversion factor and it uses the R50 value from the PDE scan and, and also uses this equation if we use the cylindrical beam. And this equation is from TG51. Then this is the empirical uh, equation. So the last factor also has no unit is the Ke cal, which is the photon electron conversion factor. We can find this factor from table three in the TG51 report, and uh, it is decided from the chamber information. So for example, in here, um, it lists the type of chamber that are normally used for TG51 measurements. And uh, it lists the Ke cal value for different types of chamber. And if your chamber is not within this um, listed types, 
you will find the closest thickness, cavity radius, and material of your chamber. Find the closest one from this table, and then you can get your KE cal uh, from this table. So pretty much, this is the breakdown of the KQ factor for electron beam. It's the multiplication of these three factors, and uh, two of these factors will need the R50 value and the DREF, um, etc. So let's see uh, an example sheet um, for a calculation of the 6 MeV uh, electron beam. How do we do TG51, or how do we find the KQ factor uh, for the 6 MeV electron beam? <clears throat> so in here, um, we will need the chamber information, the radius of the cavity, because we will need it for the P gradient factor, and we use the cylindrical chamber for our TG51. So our P gradient is actually not equal to one. And then for the beam quality, particularly, we use uh, this part for the beam quality um, calculation. So it has two parts. You know, we first scan the PDD and we find the R50 value from our annual scan. And in this case, it's 2.388 centimeter for a six MeV electron beam. And then we immediately find the KR50 prime factor by using uh, this equation from TG51. So that's how we get the this factor. And the KE cal factor, we obtained uh, the chamber type, and we use this chamber type, we obtained the KE cal factor from the table three in TG51 that we just talked about in the last slice. And uh, remember the the reference depth, the DREF, is also very important. It is because this is the, the, the place that where the center of the chamber is placed for our actual measurement. And this DREF is closely related to the R50, which is also from the TG51 scan um, using this equation. Okay. All right, so now we know the KR50 prime, KE cal, all we need to do uh, is to obtain the P gradient factor, which is the last component that comprised of the beam quality for an electron beam. So what we do, because of the P gradient, we want to use the ratio of the two raw readings, one placed at the DREF, one place at the DREF plus 0.5 multiply the cavity of the radius, which is 0 0.275 centimeter, which is the R calf. So what we need to do is to we place the center of the chamber at this depth, DREF plus 0.5 times R calf, and we deliver 100 MU, we get a reading of M raw. And then, which is average, of course, we took three readings and we average it, which is negative 9.81. And then we took the chamber, um, the center of the chamber placed at DREF. Um, and we get our M raw reading right here. So for example, we run the chamber at negative 300 volts, we take three readings and Net, and we average them, negative 9.76 is the M raw at DREF. So then we'll have our P gradient is the ratio of the two values, um, negative 9.81 divided by negative 9.76, which is the 1.0044. It is the P gradient. So when we multiply the KE cal, KR50 prime, and P gradient, this is how we obtain the KQ factor for uh, our 6 MeV electron beam. And then after this um, beam quality KQ factors, uh, we will of course obtain the corrected chamber readings following uh, the previous lectures 
um, and we will obtain the PTP factors, which is from temperature and pressure correction, ionization correction factors, and the p-polarity correction factors. And then we can con we can convert our raw reading at negative 300 volts, which is this, uh, back to a corrected uh, M reading. And of course, um, we multiply everything together, we'll get our, and divided by the PDD at D ref for this particular 6 MeV electron, and we will obtain the dose at D max, and we use that divided by 100 MU that we delivered, we can have our output of the LINAC at D max. And in this case, our, our output is 1.018 centigrade per MU, which is 1.8% higher than unity. And then we'll adjust the machine. We'll adjust the output back to one centigrade per MU. And this is basically um, uh, the workflow or how we obtain the output of a LINAC electron beam.